We're at Kaken. Um, I'm Izzy. And I'm Hannah. Um, we also work with Tanya Cruz, who's not here, but she's here in spirit, of course. Um, so Kaken means experience in Japanese, which is at the core of our practice and really underpins how we approach making work and creating experiences. We are a collaborative practice who create gamified experiences. We are based between London and Berlin and come from mixed diasporic backgrounds, including Mexican, Japanese, European and Jewish. Since the beginning, we've always worked with many collaborators from varying creative backgrounds. We create speculative worlds merging the physical and digital, the digital, using installation, film, gamified performances, and many XR technologies. We like to make technology ourselves and also have worked with startups to develop their tech, as well as using existing technologies. Um, so we are building and imagining metaverses to simulate new structures and ways of existing and to test drive possible futures. We explore how societal interjection governs the way we feel, think, and perceive. So a metaverse is a term typically used to describe the concept of a future iteration of the internet, and it's often made up of an immersive, persistent, shared 3D virtual spaces, which are linked into a perceived sort of virtual reality or virtual world. So today we're going to be talking about our game, Wisdoms for Love 3.0. It is an online decision-making game and non-fungible token NFT collectibles project. We collaborated on this project with coders and artists Obsolete, then we also work with CGI artist Ryan Voltaire on the CGI, and the last part of the film stars model, dancer, and activist Sakima Crook. So players must work their way through a labyrinth of metaphorical decisions. The decision-making points are punctuated by cutscenes filled with symbolic imagery and sounds, an instant reveal of the path the players find themselves on. As the players progress through the game, they connect wisdom tokens, digital artworks of the objects inside the game. Wisdoms for Love 3.0 features live chat and multiplayer game functions, enabling players to view a map which details the different potential pathways and details the location of other online players. It also features an unlockable bonus level. So now we're going to show you a short demo video of the game, which is actually um, illustrated by Tani, who's not here, but is here now. So I'm going to click on generate your identity to create a new identity. I'm going to press join now to start playing the game. Let me show you this game. You might not know. This is a little chat box here so I can communicate with other players who are online at the same time. Inside your womb, you carry your wisdom tokens. During gameplay, press on the wisdom tokens to learn more about what you carry within. To reach love if you press the plus sign, you can zoom in and zoom out of the map as well. I'm going to press play. If I click on this open inventory, I can see the wisdom tokens that I've been collecting so far as I journey through the game. And if I click on the map here, you can see uh, the blue dot represents where I am, but I can click on the different dots to explore the map. It's only a game. Don't worry. You don't even need to think about it. Just let the technology scan your internal land. Do you accept? Yes. No. I'm gonna hit yes. So you can see now that I've come to the next level, I've actually collected some new wisdom tokens. Each thing is given a unique center point. From your center point, you will be a story of self. This center point will always be yours. It touches you to the earth and positions your axis of existence. 
is the only guaranteed consistency you have in conscious life. Now I'm gonna hit download because I actually want to save my tokens now. So wisdom tokens are free artworks that can be downloaded at the end of the player's gameplay session. Players will receive a zip file with their assigned username that contains their collected tokens. The digital package includes an animatic and still poster of all available wisdom tokens, a moral contract, and their individual wisdom tokens. The moral contract binds the user in a moral exchange with the artist rather than a financial one. The moral contract was conceptualized with artist Susanna Pettigrew. Wisdom tokens will soon also be available as NFTs. NFTs or non-fungible tokens are unique digital tokens that serve as proof of ownership of an asset and cannot be replicated. NFTs use blockchain technology which acts as a digital record of all transactions related to NFTs on a vast network of computers. It considers wisdom as a tool of growth and change and process and proposes it as a form of currency to transact with that could be applied to the blockchain and integrated into future Web 3.0 technologies. This could create alternative definitions of wealth for the game of the earth. Money is a transactional tool in which we are chasing numbers for survival and success. It's the way in which we maneuver through the system and it affects how we move through it. What happens if we use the blockchain to store nuanced and ephemeral forms of value and mediums of exchange? The game is set in a speculative world in our metaverse. It, has a meta, it is a meta concept that contemplates the intersection of disparate current and impending events in a post-COVID-19 future. A meta concept is the mind's generalized representation of one or more concepts. In other words, a concept about multiple concepts. The game explores social distancing, philosophical understanding of rapidly advancing technology, growing wealth inequality, exacerbated divisions in ideology, and the colonization of our internal, external, and digital land. I'm not sure if anyone could guess who that was. <laughs> He's been a naughty person. <laughs> um, 
In reference to pre, an essay by Jan Dimitriscu, the time of this metaverse is set in a state of pre, in which the structures of the world are on the brink of enormous changes. It is at the end of something, where it is difficult to both define that something and to see what is beyond. It's a transitional state that is not easy for the collective mind to comprehend. Therefore, friction, confusion, and fear rise to the surface in a chaotic battleground of emotions. These feelings are transposed into symbols and semiotics to build the architecture of the metaverse and are used to reimagine the architecture of the body. As neuroscientist Antonio Damasio states in The Strange Order of Things, feelings have not been given enough credit that they deserve as motivators, motives, monitors, and negotiators of cultural human endeavors. And it is the feelings that motivate us to build, to invent, and to create all artifacts and instruments of culture. These feelings are also the weapons and the carrier bags that the characters hold within to attack, compete, defend, and protect themselves. In a time of unprecedented change, Wisdoms for Love 3.0 attempts to subvert the contemporary moment into the metaverse. It encourages a perspective that pulls the audience out of the present moment and into a bird's eye view. From here, one can contemplate the network of multiple issues and topics to try and reimagine the order of why and how we got to where we are now. It positions the lens to see the self in each one of us as one being manifesting in countless forms of feelings, beliefs, and consciousness that strand through each other, creating cultures and foundations for our future. It acknowledges that we will always have the tools and ability for violence, competition, nurture and community, and that the way we feel will affect the way we use the tools and ultimately the way we build our future. So actually initially um, this project was a 35 minute five channel installation which had very little dialogue and, and the communication was primarily through sound and semiotics. We then transformed it into an online game, which we have once again transformed it into another immersive game installation. This is currently on show at Heck Basel and will soon be exhibited at Thailand Biennale. It's quite a good example of how, like, to be able to create our work, we try to, like, re-transform the work that we've already made because it's so hard to constantly be making new work. So we kind of like to allow it to be kind of constantly live or have the possibility to world build from. Yeah, it's, it's constantly in a state of, like, metamorphosis. Yeah, And exactly. transformation and going in, like, different directions. Cool, I think that's... And that's everything, guys. Thanks for watching, <laughs> listening. <laughs>